Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Danielle, just in case you are new here. And um, today we're gonna talk about things fat people experience that maybe not everybody realizes. This is part two. I did a video a couple of years ago along a similar vein and I thought it was time for an updated version because while times have changed, they haven't changed that much. So, let's get on with the list, shall we? I did go to my Instagram for this and I sourced some feelings that we all get or these things that are said to us, we experience, and um, people who aren't fat generally don't experience them all the time. Now, yeah, sure, some of these things may have happened to you if you're not fat, um, but this is like on a regular basis. All the dang time these things happen to us. Some ground rules, because I'm gonna have to put them in there. If you're gonna be a jerk, your comment will be deleted and you'll be blocked from the channel. Simple as that, this is my community and I make the rules. You're not allowed to be here if you're going to be a jerk. We've all been there. Actually, maybe we haven't. You're just sitting there, eating your dinner, eating your lunch. Maybe before the sickness. You were sitting in a food court in a mall, just eating your lunch, probably alone because people rarely will approach you when you're t with someone else. But someone just comes up to you and starts commenting on what you're eating. Saying, oh, well, you're going to have to work that off later, aren't you? Who says that? Who just walks up to a stranger and starts talking about how they're going to have to exercise their food off? First off, um, that's not how it works. Second, those comments are so fat phobic. You are assuming that the person who's eating is unaware that they're fat, unaware that the world hates them, and that they think they need to work it off. Well, that's not the case, okay? Stop commenting on what people are eating, doing, drinking while living their lives, okay? Now, this is one I feel a whole heck of a lot and was something I got as a response through my Instagram, and it's travel anxiety. What if my suitcase goes missing off into the ether of whatever happens to missing suitcases that are never recovered, um, probably with all the socks get lost in your dryer? Uh, what happens if my luggage goes missing when I go on vacation and I have to buy new clothes? Well, if you're my size, you pack an extra outfit and like five pairs of underwear in your backpack or your carry-on that can't get lost um, and you guard that thing with your life because you can bet as somebody who wears a size 5 or 6x depending on the fit, um, I am going to struggle so hard going on vacation and needing to buy clothes, okay? Now, if I were, say, going somewhere for a month, like I was tr slow traveling, you know, all of my stuff got stolen, I could probably find something new because I could order it and have it delivered. But if I'm going to Mexico for a beach vacation, not anytime soon, but if I was, where the heck am I going to get a swimsuit that fits? Um like a cover-up or a dress, like the basic things you need for a beach vacation. I would say if you're going somewhere and you're scared that your clothes will go missing, pack your essentials in your backpack or your carry-on. Um, at least like a few pairs of underwear, your bathing suit, one outfit that you can wear multiple times and would be okay with that. Um, and if you have like big feet or wide feet, and can't easily replace like sandals or something like that, put an extra pair of shoes in there too. I know it makes your backpack really heavy or very bulky, but um, this is something I learned from being in Girl Guides, is to always be prepared for the unexpected, maybe Big Brother and Girl Guides combined, and um, I always pack at least underwear in my carry-on. 
um, because I will not get to my final destination and not at least have clean underwear, okay? You will have the outfit you're wearing, so make sure it's something that you can wear comfortably wherever you're going, but you need to be prepared. And that's the unfortunate problem is that um, a thin person could probably walk off the plane, walk into the hotel gift shop and buy a whole new outfit or five. And that's not going to be possible as a fat person. It just isn't. Chairs. I'm sure I talked about chairs in the first video. I don't know. I haven't rewatched it. I hate listening to my voice. So, um, chairs. Specifically, event chairs. Those plastic and maybe metal folding chairs that are the size of one ass cheek those chairs those ones that you know when you sit on it there's a good chance when you get up that chair will be permanently deformed or broken they are literally my nightmare and the thing is is i know stronger chairs like stronger folding chairs exist i've seen them i made my friend buy them for her event space because i said listen i'm not coming anywhere near this space if i can't comfortably sit on the chair so she went out and she found chairs that have a higher weight limit. Actually, their weight limit was 400 pounds, okay? Unheard of, okay? And like, just the fear that you have to sit down because it'd be weird if you stood for the whole time and nobody wants to stand for however long a wedding is um, or an event and you might break the chair and everyone will know because it will be a spectacle and no one's gonna be like it's totally fine they're all gonna be like ah! you know um chairs chairs are a huge source of anxiety if i'm going anywhere i haven't been before this is a pretty common one and it's seat belts and it's specifically seat belts not necessarily in your car because you get to choose the car and you can test drive a bunch of different ones. Personally, I own a Kia Soul and I have tons of room in my seat belt. Um, I also could lower the seat so my head doesn't touch. And I have tons of leg room, especially the footwell is really wide. I think it's a very fat friendly driver car. Like um, the driver side is very fat friendly. My sister says, because she's also fat and would be fine with me saying that, um, the driver's side is a little narrower and her butt does spill over a little, but, um, if you have really wide hips, the passenger side is not as great, but she doesn't drive my car, so she has to put up with it anyway. Um, but I have plenty enough room in the driver's side, so if you're the one driving the car all the time, my Kia Soul, I highly recommend. But, when you have to get into other people's cars, like an Uber, or a Lyft, or whatever, but, say you need to get into ta a taxi, and of course, in certain places they do require that you actually wear your seatbelt in the back of a taxi but it doesn't go around you and then you have to do that whole thing where you're like fitting your body through like the cross bit so that you have enough room to like buckle it it's just a nightmare and if you ride in taxis a lot like you live in a city where you walk or you take a taxi you're going through this all the time and it's terrifying. It's dangerous not wearing a seatbelt in a car, driving through a city. You know, um, I mean, it's dangerous to not wear a seatbelt anytime. But then you have to think like airplanes, seatbelts are there. Amusement park rides, you know, the ones where it's literally just a seatbelt holding you in and the seat in the seat, two people are supposed to fit. And then when you go to put the seatbelt around you, it doesn't fit around the one person. <sighs> That's terrifying. And then you have to get off in front of everybody else like you have to get off the ride been there done that do not want to repeat it the next one is kind of general and that's sort of anything slightly adventure where you need sef safety equipment so skydiving um bungee jumping uh zip lining which i would love to go zip lining but none of those harnesses are made to fit you, tested on a fat person. A lot of them have weight limits and they cannot go over them because their insurance won't cover if there is an accident. Um, a lot of like the equipment isn't tested for people over a certain limit. And so you may be an adventure type person, 
but then you go on vacation or you decide you know what I'm gonna take a ropes course that sounds really fun you know I'm terrified of heights so like it's never gonna happen and I'm very clumsy so I would just fall off but you decide I'm gonna do this thing you show up you've already prepaid it's non-refundable they said nothing about there being a weight limit so and you've read all the fine print too okay there's no nothing mentioning a weight limit then you get there and they're like yeah can you step on this scale because you look like you're probably close to our weight limit and um you can't go if you're over 250 pounds how disappointing is that what if you went with a group of friends and you show up and you're the only one who can't go but you've already paid for everything how disappointing is that okay here's one for you that i really never thought about because i've never encountered it personally but bondage gear. I was watching a Megan Tonjes video, um, one of her like sponsored unboxings with Adam and Eve, um, and she was talking about she was opening like this over the door bondage kit and she's like oh I'm definitely over the weight limit for this and sure enough she was reading the box and there was a, a weight limit and I like just thinking about like Okay, what other weight-bearing bondage gear, like sex toy gear, would cause you to not be able to use it? Like a swing, um, maybe even like handcuffs that go behind your back because you're wider and they don't reach as far, um, lingerie that we get left out of. Like, could you imagine being in the middle of sex and just suddenly whatever you're using collapses? You either have a really awesome partner who is going to just kind of laugh it off with you and get you through it and be like, that does not matter to me, let's keep going. Or there's going to be somebody who is going to shame you for it or not be there for you or not understand. And it's terrifying waiting the few seconds in between thinking about, is that person this way or not? Like. Am I going to get support or am I going to get laughed at? I don't really want to get laughed at, thank you, while I'm naked. RV bathrooms. We can all understand, in an RV, space is very limited. I do get that. But holy frig, is an RV bath bathroom small, okay? Uh, depending on if you're going for an A-class RV, which are the big jumbo, like tour bus style big ones, they have a bit bigger bathrooms, okay? But a lot of RVs have like tiny little like corner showers where like your elbows are hitting the door and or you know, they're just small, okay? Maybe you can't even close the door because your body will touch the door while you're pooping or whatever. RV bathrooms, I want to own an RV sometime in the next three years when I live in it and I move around constantly but what always holds me up is and finding like the right RV for me is looking at the bathrooms and saying could I realistically shower in here would I have enough space would I have to make accommodations like a lot of them and maybe take out the bathroom and refit it for my body that is something you really have to take into consideration if you're going to live in an RV as a fat person but if you have to make it bigger because you are bigger you are gonna end up losing livable space in your RV and that's just like it's something you have to think about and I don't think that people understand when they're like just you know buy an RV mm, okay I will but I won't be able to use it Okay, sorry for the lighting change. It got real dark in here real fast while I was talking, so. This one I experienced pretty recently. I mean, not in sickness times, but working out. So, I don't like going to the gym. I genuinely just don't like being in a gym. Um, mostly because you can feel the judgmental stares pinging off of your body as you do anything walking, breathing, existing, um, but I do really like going to Aquafit. But what does Aquafit have in spades? Judgmental old ladies. 
they will literally say, I've never seen you here before. Oh, it's so good that you've decided to start working out. Just because you haven't seen me here doesn't mean I don't come. It means I go to whatever time suits my schedule for that day. You come at the exact same time every day because you are a creature of habit and you have a routine. And I work for myself and fit it in whenever I can, also can afford it, also need it mentally to get out of the house, go swimming, enjoy the water, not on my period, whatever. I mean, I know I can swim on my period, I just don't like to. I have been to Aquafit so many times and spent the 15 minutes waiting to get into the pool beforehand because I'm an idiot and show up early to everything. Um, explaining to everyone in the class that I know how to swim, I've been to Aquafit many times before, and that what they're saying is super fat phobic and judgmental. Um, oftentimes I will literally not answer them, pretend I can't hear them and walk away because there's literally no other way to get away from them. Even the instructor has come over and said, oh, you must be new. And I'm like, no, I have been coming to this pool since I was a child. I took swimming lessons in this pool. I'm not new. I took Aquafit when I was in high school because I liked it. And just, Aquafit should just be rena like renamed the Old Lady Judgmental Club. That's really all it is. Because all the dudes in the class give zero Fs that I'm there. They don't even want to be there. They just show up because it's the easiest exercise they can do. But those ladies with the blue hair are intense. And you can feel them just staring at you and judging you. And then you don't need to feel it anymore because they're just talking to you and spewing the judgment. This is something that um, definitely not everyone experiences. Um, and that's the assumption that all fat people are the same. We're not. We're all different and some of us work out, some of us don't. Some of us eat a lot, some of us don't. Some, some of us have eating disorders and some of us don't. Um, some of us are super fat and some of us are not. Some would like to be hyper feminine and super girly. And some of us just want to be comfortable. Some of us would like to dress a little more androgynously. Some of us would like to not have boobs at all. And you know what? Being mashed in all together and treated all exactly the same like we are drains on society that we only sit around eating tons of food all day never moving never working out um just being a burden on the world that is not the case we don't owe anyone to be healthy we don't owe anyone to prove that we are good fatties, as, um, as a term that I've heard quite a bit. Um, we also, like, still deserve to be treated like human beings, even if we are fat. A fat is not, being fat is not um, a factor in being a good person. Um, Quite literally, you could be thin and a serial killer and probably treated better than a fat person sometimes. Um, bold statement, I know, but you know, we've all seen how the world is going lately and uh, if you are a fat person, not even, if you're a fat person, you're treated like garbage. But if you're a fat person who happens to also be black or a person of color, um, you're treated even worse because it's like two-factor. I'm not speaking from experience, obviously. I'm very white. All of my family history is white people. But 
you know what? We need to start treating everyone better. We need to... We just need to be better. Stop treating fat people like we are the worst humans in the entire world. I've not murdered anybody. I've not started a dictatorship. I have not decided to overthrow the government this week. Um, I am not an anti-vaxxer. I, oh boy, this is so going to be demonetized. Um, there are so many things that I've not done and yet I'm still treated like I'm not a human being because I happen to be fat. All right, that's everything I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you like this video, don't forget to like it. If you wanna hang out and see more from me, don't forget to subscribe. Um, if you have anything to add to this list, feel free to add it in the comments. But remember, be respectful and be nice because I do not allow, allow jerks in my comments. You will be kicked out. My community, my rules. Also, if you would like to hang out with me even more during the month, I just launched channel memberships. So, uh, I'm gonna leave like a card or something to the video talking about it where you can sign up if you want. Um, yeah, that's all I have for you guys today. Thanks for watching. Bye!